Hello, my name is Jeff Kroll. As a child, I spent many hours playing on sandbars and in tide pools by the ocean. And as I'd walk over by those tide pools and sandbars, I'd stop by this cove and say, what's beneath the surface of those waters in that cove? So I got my mass fins and snorkel and started to explore. Later on, I became involved with scuba diving, and I haven't stopped exploring the ocean since. It's a passion of mine, and I want to share this passion with you. Today, we're going to be exploring the marine ecosystems of New England. We're going to explore exciting habitats, and you're going to be right there with me, swimming along to see all the neat and fascinating creatures that we'll be discovering. Next, we're going to explore the sandy bottom area right in the middle of the cove. You'll notice that it's almost like we're exploring an underwater desert. However, there's more to, the, to that area than what meets the eye. When diving, the conditions can change from one area to the next. The points of control device is being adjusted, so that diving underwater requires less work. Sometimes, with all the sediment in the water, we can feel as if we're swimming in a snowstorm. The sandy bottom area can be real barren. These hermit crabs are brave to live in an area such as this. In most instances, animals will move away as we approach, but not this crab. It walked right up to her camera. Flounders swim easily in this area. What adaptation do you think that this fish has made to live in this environment? At times, we feel as if we're flying over an underwater desert. We enjoy digging for clams at the beach, but digging for clams while scuba diving? It's a whole new experience! At first, the clam is slightly open, so we can see how a clam can take in seawater and thus nutrients from which to feed. But as we are studying different areas of this clam, the clam begins to close its shell and really wants to be left alone. Swimming with a flounder, it is playing hide and seek with us. Let's move on to see what else we can see in this area. The hermit crab is one of the best examples of a marine animal that can survive and adapt. Quick and agile, it uses its shell for protection. When it has outgrown its shell, the hermit crab will find another one to live in. Notice how one of its claws is larger than the other. What do you think this is? On our way back, isn't it hard to resist the urge to dig for another clam? We're also going to swim by the kelp bed area of the cove on the right hand side. You'll notice a lot of kelp, a lot of vegetation. This not only provides food, but also cover for the animals. Swimming out to the kelp area, we are surrounded by vegetation. When walking along the beach, many of us probably wonder what seaweed looks like when it is actually living in the water. And now we know. The rockweed that we are swimming by has small air bladders which elevates the plant towards the surface so that it can receive more light.
With the protection of the kelp, this is a favorite place for lobsters to live. Searching through the kelp, I bet we can find one, and we have. This one doesn't like us coming into its territory and wants to fight it first, but then it quickly flees. Does this lobster move in the manner that you think that it would? Swimming along, notice how the fish enjoy living in this area. Shallow, protected, with food readily available. Not only does this adult crab watch us as we swim by, but a small one also. Playing with it, notice how this baby crab can be very agile too. Look how these plants and animals are living together. It's like a small community on this rock. Just like the rocky coastline area, the wave action delivers food and nutrients to this part of the ecosystem. Particularly for these fish called cunner, we can see how important this area is for protection. Diving along, the pace slows down, and we're focused on the environment around us. This is one feature of diving that makes it so special. The kelp provides protection for many animals. It's fun to explore. Knowing that there are many creatures in this area, we want to spend extra time here. But while we are exploring this area, look what Don the cameraman finds in another, a sea raven. An unusual fish that looks like an underwater dragon with such cool colors. Checking the compass, it's time for us to head back to shore. So today, we've taken an underwater tour of the marine ecosystem of New England. We've been able to study this marine environment, understand how the animals live within this habitat, and also at the same time, be able to appreciate the different environmental forces that have an impact on this environment. We've been able to understand that there's four different areas that we looked at today and that for animals to survive they must be able to adapt. As we explored the marine ecosystem of New England we've been able to understand the fact that it's a unique, exciting, dynamic and changing environment. This program has been about exploring because when you explore you have fun and through exploration you can grow. The next time you're by a cove or a body of water, explore and dive in.